An estimated 3.7 million South African girls cannot afford femin uh, fe feminine hygiene products, and at least 30% of them miss school while on their period. Now, the unsanitary conditions of many schools serving poor communities also makes it more difficult for girls to practice menstrual hygiene and dispose of waste. In fact, this is all according to the 2023 Women's Report uh, to be released today. Now, women entrepreneurs are now coming uh, together to alleviate period poverty. Contributor to the report, Dr. Nishana Bogal from Stellenbosch Business School speaks to us from Cape Town. A very good morning, doctor. Let's start about the reality that a young girl in South Africa faces in as far as the ma uh, menstrual um, um, hygiene is concerned. What does that reality look like for this young girl? So at the, uh, thank you, William. At the most fundamental level, these girls don't have access to safe and hygienic menstrual uh, products, which means they are using alternatives that are far from desirable. These include things like cow dung, newspaper, leaves, rags, and using these products pose health-related uh, risks and also uh, because of the risk of bleeding and to avoid uh, embarrassment, these girls often stay away from school. So menstrual-related absenteeism. These schools offer also lack proper infrastructure. So as many as 3,200 schools still have put latrines in uh, South Africa. And many of these schools also lack hand washing facilities and soap and um, also lack safe disposal uh, facilities for menstrual uh, products. Um, these girls also don't have access to accurate information, which uh, perpetuates taboos and myths related to uh, menstruation. In many cultures, uh, menstruation is considered dirty, and so women and girls who are menstruating are excluded from social activities and uh, sometimes imposed uh, dietary restrictions and so on. Doctor, I've got two girls. One is four and one is just above 19 years old. Obviously, the teen, um, when she started going on her period, I was a very uh, involved father who ensured that she gets her pads and things like that, uh, which obviously meant arming myself with the relevant and necessary information uh, to support her throughout this journey. But I imagine this is not the reality for most young girls in South Africa. What needs to change or what needs to be done just from an informative stance to assist young ladies especially from the male figures within their lives well well done to you william for playing that role in your daughter's life i think that uh, men and boys also have a responsibility to be educated in the sphere so arm yourself with factual information. South Africa has many subcultures that are still patriarchal and men and boys will play a, an important role in bringing about gender equity. So uh, I think the best thing you can do is educate yourself so that you can be part of the solution of debunking the myths and taboos related to menstruation. And beyond the activism, doctor, um, us donating um, menstrual hygiene products, what else can society do as a whole? So I think uh, in addition to the menstrual products, there's a number of um, shortcomings that um, schools experience. So if we can be part of the solution of you know, bringing about proper infrastructure, and uh, supporting the girls in that way, taking away, you know, reducing the taboo, making uh, menstruation and uh, such conversation almost part of uh, dinnertime conversation. It just takes away the stigma associated with that. So um, that would, those would be some of the things we could do to alleviate uh, the situation. Um, support school, support poorer girls, um, have, frank conversations. And doctor, what have you found to be the feedback or reaction from young girls, um, their parents uh, to that end as well? 
So I think that uh, parents, uh, some parents uh, approach this uh, w with a little bit, a little gingerly. Others embrace it. And I guess once you get going with a conversation, people open up. But there's also something about building some trust before you can, uh, you know, dive in into this conversation in certain spaces. Um, I find even in my in my own circle of friends and family, when I started having these conversation. Uh, conversations. It was certainly a conversation stopper, and uh, now I, we can speak about this more and more frankly with the same people that had some discomfort uh, previously. So I'd encourage people to have more conversations. And doctor, where can we access your report just for further reading? Someone who's watching us this morning and is hearing about it for the first time, what advice would you have for them? So there is the woman's report is available. Uh, I think that there will be a copy available at www.womansreport.africa. So you can access the full report there. And that should give you a fair bit of information around menstrual uh, health and hygiene. Dr. Nishana, thank, thank you, you so much for your course. time this morning and a happy Women's Day to you. Uh, that's Dr. Nishana Bogal from Stellenbosch Business School talking to you and I about the period poverty that a young girl in South Africa in 2023 on this ninth day of August Women's Day is still experiencing and is still having to contend with that reality of um, ill-informed people around her. So how do we help this young girl? Obviously, the first thing to do after this conversation with the doctor is to get your hands on that report.